So I'm going to start off with the, uh, uh, the most basic level, which is going from CAD straight to, through to manufacture. Uh, I'm going to click on the CAD icon here and launch the integrated CAD package, uh, which you can use. There's a variety of drawing tools here that you can use to define your geometry. Equally, you can import into here through a variety of formats, the most popular being DXF and Windows Metafile WMF. Okay, I'm just going to show you how the uh, philosophy of, of, of this package works. Um, so if I draw a circle, and then let's draw a shape within that, I'll do a pentagon, drop that in there. Okay. Now if I want to machine away the material between those two pieces of, pieces of geometry, all I need to do is fill it with colour. So I'm going to select the fill tool, select the colour. All you need to think about at the design stage is anything you want cut in a different depth, you allocate a different colour. It doesn't matter what colour at this stage, just a different one. OK, I'm going to select the outer boundary. It says, are there any islands? Well, the pentagon within the circle is an island, so I say yes. Select that. Any more? No. And the area is filled. We don't need to think about the design stage, uh, what cutters are going to be used, because we, we will automatically offset for cutter radius and we'll produce the file size for size. Okay, another pot type of pocketed area um, would be uh, text. So if I just do a little text entry here and Okay, we put that in there. Just resize it. There's a, a number of things we can actually do. We take, we can pocket out like this, where we take away the, the black area. Uh, we could actually fill the area around the text and machine everything else and leave the text stood high. Or we can even engrave the outline of the text. Uh, so these two are pocketed areas, areas filled with colour. Uh, the other way we can um, use the software is actually to uh, allocate line widths that match the diameter of cutters. If we want to have a look what cutters are available, we can quickly flick back and look in the tool library here, and these are all the cutters that are available for this machine. Uh, so if I want to use this 3mm cutter, if I go back to the design, I'm going to set my line thickness to 3 going to change the colour because I don't want it the same depth as, as either of those two uh, entities so I'm going to select green uh, and we'll just select the wavy line tool here. Okay so we've got three items in there in three different colours. I'm just going to show you now quickly how we turn that into a program that we can send to the machine to run a manufacturing cycle. So I go file to mill give the design a name and now we're working with a routing machine here which is why we've got the, the softer materials uh, for a milling machine we, we just get uh, 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 material suitable for those machines um, and I'm now going to set depths for each of the colours that are in the drawing so I might want the, the black 3 I might want the green 2 and I might want the red 2.5 select OK, I select process, I can save those settings I've just made with that drawing so next time I pull it up I don't have to redefine everything and then we get a simulation and if I just rewind that and play it a little slower we get a simulation of the manufacture process. This is a GNM code program here built up automatically uh, we don't have to know anything about it if we don't want to um, but it is a, a program that is uh, made to industrial standards. So we'll just watch that finish. You'll see at the bottom it'll come in with the three millimeter tool and follow the line. Okay, so very simple two and a half D machining. Uh, were we connected to a machine, we could now click on the manufacture icon and we could go straight to manufacture and make that component. I'll just show you a few more advanced options that we have available. If I pull up another drawing here, so again it's a drawing that's got different colours uh, and different lines, but here when I process, I'm going to show you how not only can we allocate different depths to different line colours, 
we can also allocate the type of tool that will follow. So for instance on the, the light blue there we've got dovetail, on the dark blue we've got an overload cutter which is used to round the edge of material, we've got a keyhole cutter on the yellow there, uh, and we've got a ball end or a radius cutter on the green. So if we now process that, th process that through, you can see the net effect. So the initial machining is done with a straight cutter as we've seen and then we're going to switch to the radius cutter which followed the green line and then the dovetail cutter and then the overload cutter for rounding the outside and finally the keyhole cutter. Okay we can zoom in we can turn on translucency so we can start to see the detail within the keyhole we've cut here. So you can see by using a variety of different options we can get different effects. Uh, another nice little feature, and this is useful if you want to uh, either cut through sheet material or, or maybe do some inlay work, uh, I'm going to do something very very simple here. So I'm just going to do a couple of wavy lines there. I'm going to fill the area uh, between them uh, with colour. So fill that um, and I'm going to process that through. And if we left it set with the defaults we would get this pocketed away like we saw the filled areas previously. I'm going to set a depth but instead of letting it pocket away I'm going to go into the advanced options and where the style here is set to area, which means remove the area, I'm going to change it and say do an outside path. Okay, so I click process. Okay, and that is actually just in a pass around the perimeter. So it's gone inside the inner and outside the outer because this was the component we want. It's automatically offset for cutter radius and we've actually cut the component out. And we could be doing that from sheet material um, and equally we could go back and reprocess that and change that option to inside and then providing we haven't got sharp corners we'll be able to do perfect inlay work. So it's a nice way of using the, the CAD software in a different, in a different way.